Hola, everybody. Hey, we just rolled back home from Wyoming, and I got a uh, deer and a couple antelope in the pot. And uh, in the state of Wyoming, outside of wilderness areas, porcupines are a predator. And uh, just growing up kind of in that Wyoming uh, lifestyle, the, the animals that are on that predator list, we typically take every chance we get. For a film, I figured I'd show you a porcupine skull. Now this skull I skinned in the field. I'll show you that now. I'm not gonna do anything special to this because it's gonna sit in the boil for a little while. I'm just gonna drop it right in the pot with everything else and then deal with it once everything's washed. So check it out, porcupine skull. This pot is full of water and peroxide, 50-50. That peroxide is 40% by volume liquid developer from the beauty supply. I have brought it to a boil, I pulled it out, and I'm gonna wash it clean. I'm using a little 1600 PSI 110 electric power washer with the fan nozzle, and I'm just gonna push water and air into every hole and every orifice on this skull. Everything's got to be clean. Wash, wash, wash. This is the fastest method anywhere. This skull, from when I dropped it in the pot to when I put it on the counter, it took 18 minutes. That's the very reason this film is short. With that skull clean of all the meat and tissue, everything being removed, I dunk it back in the hot peroxide to whiten the bone quickly. Then I just lift it out, give it a good rinse, and set it in front of a fan to dry. All right, let's wrap up the porcupine film. This is, this is a porcupine which you put it side by side next to beaver and you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference. Very, very, very similar. This particular skull, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do this part and I'm gonna do another part. This particular skull is starting to color up as beavers, porcupines, foxes do. So let's see if I can do this. Can you see the oil up in the nose there, right? doesn't hurt anything the natural look of that particular skull this is my own personal it's not like it's going to a client so typically i wouldn't change it but i had somebody make a suggestion to me some time ago when i had done it on a fox skull and i didn't share it but i wanna so i'm gonna take this porcupine you know what we're gonna do it right now y'all i finally fixed the trouble with my mic on the camera it was an internal error i apologize but the show must go on so the trick here if you have oil in a skull and you're struggling with it just soak that skull in acetone this porcupine has been in acetone for a full month it had a little bit of oil It had a little bit of oil showing up right here. So it looks as if it's yellowed a little bit, but what my guess is is that it's wet. Actually, it's drying already. I can already see it whiten up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just set this out in front of a fan, let all that acetone come off it, and then we'll look at it together. 
All right, let's wrap up this porcupine video. Uh, what I'm gonna do from this point in the film is I'm gonna take this porcupine and I'm gonna glue his jaw in place and then I'm gonna coat it in mop and glow. I'm gonna show you that process because quite a few questions just recently, where do you glue it? The only place you really can glue it is in the contact point. So the actual teeth and then the hinge so when it puts together, when you look where bone touches bone, it's the only place you can put glue. So let's glue it real quick, give it a coat of mop and glow, and go from there. I am extremely impressed with the acetone. It pulled all the oil. There is no oil, and there is no oil resurfacing. It 100% for sure made this skull a bit dull, so it's not as white as it was. But there's so much integrity in this bone, I could really easy give it a bright white dip. You know, just soak it in some peroxide just a couple of hours and it would brighten it back up. But I don't want to. I think it looks good like this. I like that kind of just like it's supposed to be look. That mop and glow normally takes about 10 minutes to dry. Tops. I put it in front of a fan. It's pretty quick. Probably faster for me in my environment uh, on the west coast here, pretty dry. Oh, hey, you guys want to see something nuts? Those are odd ad nuts. That never gets old. Another video. Just another video. Uh, all right, I'll take it outside, give you some good looks at the porcupine skull, but that's it. It's the same as any skull. Just the little ones in this size, bobcats, porcupines, beavers, coons, all that stuff, super easy. Fantastic way to get started. They're beautiful little skulls. They clean up great. Uh, maybe the takeaway from this video compared to others is the acetone trick absolutely works. Thank you for the suggestion. Several of you have told me to soak it in acetone brilliant it does not hurt the bone especially on animals of this bone structure i don't want to speak for birds or fish or any of that stuff but let's just say as a rule from that raccoon size up acetone is a fantastic soak degreaser thank you so much for watching i'm back i know you think i keep uh resetting this up but all one day just keep changing the hat who would know it's like having a mustache and glasses nobody could ever tell the difference my last recommendation is when we get a deer skull people when we get a deer we typically get hide on ears on everything just get a face um, and the bottom jaws there but as westerners we don't use the bottom jaw in our display so that deer would sit on the wall about like that, nice and beautiful, and you have that bottom jaw that um, I kind of look at now as my piece of the investment. So no, I didn't harvest the deer, but um, I have a relationship with that deer because I cleaned it for somebody and I, for some reason, think I have a connection with them. So I save the bottom jaws for a couple of reasons. I learn tons about the animal from the jaw. Like this particular one is off of a sheep, so it's got bigger bottom digging teeth. For whatever reason, I don't know. But I think I got a pretty good handle on age and genetics and how harsh the life was from that. This particular jaw is just worn and warped and old as to where I have young, new, lower jaws. And I've been doing it for so long, I have, I wish I'd have done it forever, but I started this like a year ago. So I have jaws that I can use as reference. What I'm gonna start doing is actually taking a Sharpie and writing on that jaw, Sitka Blacktail, Whitetail from the Northeast, Mule Deer from Wyoming, Mule Deer from Montana, Mule Deer from whatever. Uh, antelope whatever and then I'd like to lay them all next to each other and see because I'm crazy about critters I've always been crazy about critters I love it and my only education is what I get from my experiences here and then listening to some of the podcasts but where I'm going with that it makes fantastic displays if you have a jar like that of nothing but jaw bones like that one there 
and somebody says, oh, I don't know what you get a gift of somebody that has everything. Give them one of those. I guarantee nobody's got one of those. I'm probably the only freak that's got one. But if you're doing a bunch of skulls, save all those parts. This one here is all jaw bones. This one here is the fin that's on the back of the jaw, the hinge. Uh, this one here is the front of the jaw. It's waste, it's essentially waste. You put it in a glass jar, it's art. So, I'm going full circle. That was my segue into utilizing those parts for decor. You guys know how it is. You can't look at any sort of magazine, any sort of TV show, any sort of architectural anything these days is all based around horns and skulls. It, hunting is bad, but that stuff is art. So utilize those pieces, take that animal, utilize them where we can. People love the idea that we're using them. We always have, it's just a thing now. Um, and it looks cool. I put this up here as some of you know, because my daughter said, I need to have something up there for you guys visually. So this is my crazy that I love and I want to encourage you to be crazy with me. Thanks for watching.